wide open, and she scored! Welcome to UND Sports Extra. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, we're joined by three head coaches, men's basketball coach Brian Jones, women's basketball coach Travis Brewster, and women's hockey coach Brian Adolski. Also on the show tonight, the Evers family, deep ties to the UND athletic program, the mom, a former track star, the daughter, a current women's basketball player, and the son, a current hurdler. That's coming up later on the show. Our leadoff man tonight is men's basketball coach Brian Jones. Coach, good to be back with you again. You split two home games last weekend, beating Idaho State and falling to Weber State. That win on Saturday against Idaho State was a big one because it, it keeps you relevant and keeps you in the conversation for grabbing one of those eight playoff spots. Well, it does. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of teams kind of in our same situation. That's why I felt Saturday was you know not putting it on the guys, but it was definitely a must win for our, mm -hmm. for, for our team. With nine games left, uh, four at home, five on the road, uh, this is moving month. February is a lot like that in every league across the country. You got You're either moving up or you're moving down. So we got to think we're playing good basketball. We got to continue to build upon the weekend. Even though Thursday night we fell a little short, we did play some good basketball. All right, Ken. Let's take a look at some okay. highlights. Check it out. Last Thursday night, North Dakota against Weber State, the one Big Sky team you had never beaten coming into this game in the first half. The young freshman, Carson Shanks, getting involved here early in the first half. He really did a nice job early going right at, obviously, Ballenboy, who's, a, who's just a shot blocker and not, not having fear down there. But, but patient. You're seeing patient post moves there right to the rim. Yeah, and Carson doesn't mind squaring himself to the basket as well for the mid-range jumper. No, he does. And he's such – that's – you know, he's a face-up guy. You're going to see – hopefully there are some clips. But through the weekend, he's such a good passer as well. So that opened up some offense for Speaking everybody Speaking of – Setting up Must have read Nash. my mind right there. There you yeah, go. So, yeah, he's got a lot of skill set. So, you know, as he continues to grow and get comfortable with, with his size and what the college game is all about, he's really going to be a good player. He us. scores six of your first 12 points. He had an assist in the mix. You're out early. Eston Tyler getting to the basket here. He did in both games Thursday and He did. He, I, I tell you what, he's really – you know, people talk about Quentin Hook has really been yeah. playing well. He's silently been playing very well for us as well. Without a doubt. Bryce Cashman returned to the lineup last Thursday. He did. I was out three and a half weeks with a concussion, had a big weekend. Just confidence. You know, his conditioning isn't quite where it needs to be, but he's a physical young man who can rebound for us. Second half, you mentioned Eston Tyler. Boy, he's put together five real good games offensively for you. Kind of the Eston Tyler that we know. It is, and that's what we need him to be. He started second half. I think he had our first four baskets. We, we came out in the second half and scored seven straight times. He had nine but, points in less than two minutes. No question, and put us up five playing well. Yeah, yeah. nine points in the first minute 58, so you go up by five. Quentin Hooker uh, had another solid game in this game, 10 points and six assists. And, uh, you know, as you – tracked in the second half it was a close game for much of the second half it was obviously I think we're up three to five but then they take a lead uh, big move right here that I think that puts us up three difficult shot but oh, yeah. again it come down to the last three minutes of the game being tight and uh, knowing how to win yeah. there's this passing again as we as we mentioned just a few clips back but that's where he's really grown he's shown great strides of that all weekend and then hooker the other way this time finding Shanks inside. It's a one-point game here, and then you get down to the final two minutes, and you talk about those two or three possessions, and again, you had a turnover and a couple missed opportunities at the rim here. In the it last it was, minutes. and you know, it's just one right here, uh, just again, we had scored on that twice, so it's yeah. about logging a game and understanding you can't go to the well too many times, but those are two big possessions in a row that we needed a I needed a score, yeah. and we're getting right there. There's quality looks. They're quality opportunities. Uh, but you got to give Weber State, they, we're, we're down one, and, and Salarian comes up. Not Salarian, I'm sorry, but uh, Singlin. Singlin hits a huge step back jump shot from 20 feet, heavily guarded, and puts him up three. So, again, good guards in this league make big shots, and that's what we've seen in our building. Good guards making big shots against us down the stretch. 67 60, the final. So, you fast forward now to Saturday afternoon, Idaho State. And this is a team, Idaho State, with its zone defense, came into this game as the leading team in the big sky in field goal defense, and yet uh, you really effectively attack their zone defense. Well, I don't know what it is. Our teams have always played well against them. I don't know if we got the right scheme or what, but what you're seeing here is look at that extra ball movement. Passing up a good shot for a great shot. 
And that's what we just totally try to focus on. Sometimes coaches try to X and O it too much instead of just focusing on the basics and areas to attack. And our guys did a great job of not being passive, but making the extra pass, but being shot ready. See, there, there's, I'm almost in defense. There. You, <laughs> you are. That. You're almost uh, the, the sixth <laughs> man, but you couldn't stop Jeff Solar. No, he, he's, a, he's a, for being 6'4", I tell you what, he is such a difficult matchup because he play, look, he's really got really long arms. Yeah. Um, and a wide base about him, but you know, just a good player. Second chance points kept Idaho State in this game, but then you went on a 15-4 to run at the end of the first half. Well, it was our defense. Got us out going. That's what I keep preaching to our guys, your defense. Again, corner-to-corner -to -corner touch, wide open rhythm shot, great shot, good shot to great shot. A big run for us, but it was our defense that got us that lead. Quentin Hooker, my goodness. Uh, arguably, I think, hit the best game of his young career when you talk about offensively and defensively. One rebound away from a triple-double, and then he had a great game defensively against Chris Yeah, Hansen. I need to talk to Ryan Powell about that. That one rebound short, we need a little home cook in there <laughs> on that triple-double. But, yeah, he, he's, he's a, that's almost, I think he almost had a triple-double on the road last week, so he's definitely emerging. Uh, of really becoming a solid player. Yeah. So you lead 37-26 at the half, 15 points, 10 rebounds, uh, or 10 assists rather, which ties a career high. I mean, every highlight seemingly in this game, you're seeing 21 distribute the basketball. Well, uh, again, he can score in a lot of different ways, but he's the, the head of our transition, as you're seeing there. But Ter Terrell had a huge, you know, didn't play well in foul trouble on Thursday, but he was Again, showing his aggressiveness is when he's playing at that level and just in attack mode offensively and defensively, it takes us to a different level. He's such a strong slasher to the basket. When he's playing quality minutes, he's scoring. He is. He is. And that's where he's got to gauge how the game's being called defensively. We don't want to take away from that aggressiveness, but he's got to learn how to play the way the, the, way the game's being called. Eston Tyler with another strong game. He had a great start to the game. He had 19, but then the Bengals get within six here late in the game. and. How's your team <laughs> feeling mentally at this I, point, I think Coach? they were fine. We had to call a timeout. But it's it was all about them not playing very smart. It was what got you the lead was our defense and sharing the ball. That was a huge play. But we turned the ball over, just silly turnovers and from our ball handling guards. But, again, we made plays down the stretch. Duran had some huge plays there. Again, where he's his best slashing and tip ins and running the floor is when he's playing at his best level. Nash had all 14 of his points in the second half, 80-69. You closed out Idaho State for the much-needed win. All right, you're back on the road this weekend at Southern Utah and Northern Arizona. We'll recap those games next week on the show. Good luck, Brian. All right. We're back with women's basketball coach Travis Brewster. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. The UND women's basketball team split a pair of road games last week. We're joined by head coach Travis Brewster. Coach, good to be back with you again. Yeah, you uh, win at Weber State last Thursday, fall to Idaho State last Saturday. Just some overall reflections on the weekend as a whole. Well, you know, it's a tough road trip, and we just started out slow. You know, I thought in both games we weren't quite hitting on all cylinders right away on both ends of the floor. You know, Weber State obviously figured out a way to have some success, gave ourselves a chance at Idaho State. You know, and you just got to keep moving forward at this time of the year. The, Idaho, the uh, Weber State game, rather, uh, you turned a, a rough shooting first half into a very good shooting second half, and that was a big reason, reason why you won that game. Oh, absolutely. You know, I thought we had some tough shots there that we made in the first half. They just weren't easy buckets. You know, they were playing some good D and collapsing, and we hadn't moved the ball too well either. Mm -hmm. So we started moving the basketball in the second half and gave ourselves better looks. Let's take a look at the highlights from Weber State. Last Thursday night, you talked about not a lot of easy looks yeah. at the basket. Leah Zabla made some terrific baskets here early in the game. Yeah, she kind of kept us going in there. You know, another time she created a tough shot, you know, for herself just because the defense was tough, you know, and she knocks it down. But, you know, it's good to have a point guard, you know, just taking care of the ball. There's a good pass in there to Emily. But again, she's double team. You know, it's, it's just one of those things that happens. Evers working on the glass here, a second and third chance scoring off the glass. And then Kelsey Knox going to create a steal here, and that'll lead to a basket. Um, this game very, very tight throughout until a couple of runs by your team in the second half. Well, you know, and that's the key is you got to go on runs. And that's the name of the game and move the basketball, get it to the open people, you know. And I thought uh, we started attacking a little bit better, and you saw Megan Lauk obviously get that rebound and stick her in. And 9 of 15 field goals made in the second half doesn't hurt either. No, it doesn't hurt at all. Take it <laughs> take it every chance we get, right? Before we look at the Idaho State highlights, you shared with, with us last week that 
Idaho State is a particularly yeah. good team on its own home court. Yeah, very good team on their home floor. Uh, Coach Sobolewski wins about 68% of his games, I think, in his home floor. Uh, it's a tight gym, great crowd. Yeah. The way it goes, you know, you got to come in there and you have to play pretty much mistake-free basketball. All right, as we take a look at the highlights here, there's going to be a steady theme in the first half, and that is Emily Evers. Was this a game obviously thought where you thought she would be a mismatch for Idaho State? I did. You know, they came out and they played us zone, uh, but I thought we did a good job of adjusting uh, early on. We got her some good touches. Uh, it's just one of those things, too, with Emily. She's got to create some shots like that for herself, you know, just... Little half hooks there, good feed here come from Maya Lloyd on the give and go type of action, you know, and it's it's nice, you know, but Emily's got to get herself down there where she can score. You talk about her passing and uh, something she does very well right there, dropping it to Megan Lauk. Well, she's a tremendous passer for her size, you know, and she does a good job of reading the double or the triple team in that situation and getting the ball to her person to knock her down. Zabla again attacking the basket here, driving for two, but one thing that was uh, a bugaboo for you in this game was turnovers, 22 points off turnovers by Idaho State. Yeah, you know, we tried to thread the needle a little too many times, I thought, against the zone. Uh, I thought they did a good job on those turnovers, too. We do the key spots. Here we didn't find somebody in transition. Uh, that was a tough one. We watched that film today. But, you know, we're turning over at the top of the key. Let's them get easy scores. we got to go ahead and be a little bit more aggressive and attack the hoop. This game was really decided in the final couple minutes because you were within three late yeah. in the game, then turned the ball over, and then a few seconds later missed the layup late in the game. Yep. You know, we gave ourselves a chance. Megan Lau came in, came in there and got hot, knocked down some shots. And then uh, we had a couple play calls where, you know what, we just got to execute a little bit better down the stretch. 75-69, the final. We showed you Evers working in the first half. She was had 10 points and six rebounds in the first half. Coach, you've reached the halfway point of the Big Sky race here. You're six and three. Give us an overview of your team as you see it in the first half and uh, what your expectations for improvement are in the second half of the season. Well, I think the first half, what you see from our team is that we grew a little bit. We kind of saw, hey, this is we're in the conference play again. And we also saw somebody stepping forward a little bit, taking a little bit of ownership on the floor out of our guards. You know, Leah Zab was kind of taking that role on a little mm -hmm. bit more. One of the things you're seeing also, though, is we're starting to shoot a little bit better. Now, in the second half, we're going to have to shoot a little bit better, but I think we're going to have to try to have a little bit more ownership on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a big key for us. The scoring defensive number is probably not where you want it in Big Sky conference play. It, it can't be there in Big Sky play. Yeah. I mean, if you want to give yourself a chance, you really have to defend that end of the floor really well. All right, Coach, you're home this weekend against Southern Utah and Northern Arizona. Mm -hmm. We'll recap those games next week here on the show. Yeah, Good luck, thanks. Coach. We're back with more here on UND Sports Extra. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. The Lamaru family is considered the first family of North Dakota hockey. The Evers family also has deep ties to UND in a number of sports. Here's Greg Anchors. When you look at the track and field records on display at the University of North Dakota, you'll notice the longest standing records belong to one Margie Hudson Evers. Her abilities and determination to obtain those records have been passed on to her two children, and they're now chasing the record books themselves at the same institution as their mother 20 plus years later. It's certainly been a dream come true for our family. We've all enjoyed watching both of them, and um, it, it's just unimaginable. Um, that, that I could go to the University of North Dakota and then have two children that, that follow in my footsteps. The older of the two is Sister Emily. She's a senior on the women's basketball team and punishes her opponents in the paint every night. The younger is Brother Jimmy. He's a junior track standout that specializes in the hurdles. Neither one of them had any doubts they would one day stroll the same campus as their mom. I pretty much knew I was coming here just because it's in town, close to family, close to everybody. Certainly the athletic side definitely added a component to that, definitely making me want to stick around here more, an opportunity to still run and get a good education. And it was my dream my whole life to play basketball at UND and just to have that opportunity is huge, but again, I think regardless of athletics or not, I probably would have ended up here eventually. The Evers grew up playing multiple sports as kids. It came to both Emily and Jimmy naturally given their mother's devotion and competitive nature. Whenever we would go on in, into our sports and stuff, they would just say, like, play to be the best, play to be number one, and don't play to win, try to be first. The goal is not to be second, third, or fourth, it's to win, and, and I think that they instilled that in us, and I think that really stuck with us to this day. Yeah, for sure. Nobody holds higher standards than mom over there. 
Jimmy, in fact, plans to take on his mom's legacy when it comes to the UND record books, but don't ask him what the magic number is that he needs to obtain. I have to one-up her, you know. I have to get records, and however many she got, I get one more than her, so. Now, how many do you have to get? Oh, geez. What's the, what's the goal? Well, she's still up there for two of them, and I know she had, like, four at some point. So I, I got a lot of work to do, I guess, yeah. Actually, Jimmy, it's 10. Margie set 10 records from 1981 to 84 while at UND, but whether or not Emily or Jimmy leave a mark here as Margie did, they still enjoy sharing her success to fellow teammates and friends. It's really cool when teammates talk about it. Um, you know, I'm joking around with the 100 runners that are girls, you know, that they can't beat my mom and all this stuff. It's kind of funny. It's just really cool to be able to tell that story and just kind of share with my teammates that, like, my family's been born into the UND family and um, just to be able to show the, the freshmen that come in that it's more than just your, yourself that's in, these, in, in the shoes you're in. You're filling, you're filling people who have been here before you and it's, it's more than just one person, it's tradition across the entire athletics department. It's just been an amazing experience to see them come here and, and grow and, and work hard and set goals um, for everything they're doing every day. To this day, Margie still holds the indoor 55-meter dash record and a member of the 4x100 relay record. Women's coach Brian Adolski joins us next. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. It was another strong weekend for the North Dakota women's hockey team on the road, taking five points at Minnesota Duluth last weekend. Head coach Brian Adolski returns. Coach, good to be back with you again. I was running the numbers, and it's really, I think, phenomenal that, and your turnaround here over the last few weeks. So prior to the Bemidji State Series three weekends ago, you were four points out of fourth place or the final home playoff spot. Now you're solidly in fourth place, seven points ahead of fifth place Ohio State. What a turnaround. Yeah, it's been a fun few weeks. You know, the team's are really finding ways to win hockey games and executing at a high level and really buying into being good in our own end. And, and obviously a lot of it starts with Shelby and Net. But, uh, you know, team-wise getting contributions up and down, it's yeah. uh, fun to come to the rink. Shelby Amsley, Benzie, your goaltender, another shutout this past weekend. What We figured she's given up four goals in her last six league games. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, unbelievable. She's been playing at a high level, and uh, I really think uh, the team defensively is has been super solid in front of her as well. So mm -hmm. it's uh, fun to see in the playoff stretch playing the right way. Are you seeing the confidence brewing within your hockey team? Oh, I think there's no doubt that uh, they know if they play uh, a certain way and if we're executing at a high level, we have a chance uh, to win uh, every game we're competing in. And mm -hmm. so uh, that's uh, that's priceless when you go out and know if you do your job, you're going to win a hockey game. Yeah. Minnesota coming to the Ralph this weekend, uh, series Friday night and then Saturday afternoon. Uh, what's different about the Gophers this season, if anything? Well, you know, I think they're still extremely talented, uh, but uh, they're a little bit younger up front. I, I don't know if, uh, you know, they're as potent offensively as they've been or have as much depth on the blue line as they've had in the past, but they're still, uh, you know, probably uh, one of the higher end clubs in all of women's mm -hmm. hockey so should be a great weekend will they try to press the pace against you i think so uh, cameron easy for them can absolutely fly shipper can fly they got a lot of kids who skate extremely well up front mm -hmm. hannah brandt for them is a distributor and probably one of the best players in uh, women's mm -hmm. hockey right now so it's going to be a daunting task for us but uh, i like the way we're playing i like this group they've really uh, you know, handled a lot of adversity this year and it shows on the ice last year in one of the games Games against Minnesota, you set a new women's hockey attendance record. Nearly 5,900 fans attended one of the games. This Friday night, you will attempt to again 
set the record. And uh, tickets are one dollar, and and trying to jam even more people inside the rail for the showdown with your rival. Yeah, kudos to marketing last year. I thought they did a great job. The atmosphere was uh, unbelievable, and uh, you know it really gave our club a lift. Uh, missing a few Olympians last year, I, I thought we played a pretty fantastic game and, and had some opportunities to pull out some points there. So yeah. hopefully we can do it again. Opening the upper bowl last year was was really yeah. something special. A little different approach with your team against them this year, I would imagine, because in the past you felt like you can go up and down the ice with them. This year, probably two different styles. It's going to be a little uh, interesting to see. Um, you know, we tried uh, a little something earlier when we played them. We were playing more of a torpedo and uh, playing extra defensemen. Yep. Uh, we scrapped that and have played a more traditional uh, system. Um, so it'll be interesting, you know, because you have to press them. But I don't think you can press them for a full mm -hmm. 60 minutes. So we're going to have to mix it up and give them different looks. And if we can do that and execute, I think we'll give ourselves a pretty good chance. All right, Brian, good luck this weekend against Minnesota. Friday night again, tickets are just $1 as North Dakota tries again to set the attendance record, which it did last year against Minnesota. And then we'll have Saturday's game for you live here on Midco Sports Network, 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon, North Dakota and Minnesota. We're back with more next. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. Wednesday is National Signing Day with head football coach Bubba Schweigert and his staff announcing the 2015 recruiting class at a signing day party. Hope to see you at the Alaris Center Wednesday night. It begins at 5.30. Good chance to talk with the coach and his staff about the newest members of the North Dakota football program for your hors and you can register to win a trip to next fall's game at Montana. And coming up Saturday, North Dakota and Minnesota women's hockey live here on Midco Sports Network. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for North Dakota Hockey with Dave Axel.